or no pressure at all. Uh, <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> We're a no pressure zone. So thank you everyone for coming. I am super excited to be back again and to be able to talk about this uh, topic that is so very important. Um, and it's about building your personal brand for today and beyond. And um, as Mr. Charles said, I've been here a couple of times and I've been able to teach this and I never get bored with it. So while we go along, I'm gonna ask you some questions. I would love for you to participate um uh giving me some feedback letting me know if you have any questions we can stop we're going to take brief breaks i talk a little fast but we have a lot of information to cover so again let's get started and i want to make sure that everyone is ready okay so if you're ready let us know say we are ready we are ready for this topic um okay everyone uh let's see let me go to thing. First, I want to let you know what we're going to cover today. We are going to cover personal branding um, and we're welcoming, we're, we're going to be talking about the welcome, style and branding, define, overview of the business branding. What is our new normal and what does that look like? And what is the difference between personal style and branding and personal branding? I have two videos that I want you to watch. It's about a couple minutes of each. Um, and one is called the study of, of enclosed cognition. And then I have a few case studies, one case study from 2017, 18, and 19 uh, from a couple of clients. Um, and then I want to talk about style psychology and what does this mean? And this is my transformational program that I've developed and how it um, affects our personal style IQ and EQ and how we um, move naturally in the world and what that looks like for us day to day. And how can you move from uncertainty with all of this information to certainty? And then we'll close for the day. Um, so first questions up, how many of you are, are back to work at this time? If you can put that in the chat, I would love to see it. Oops, sorry. Are you back to work? Um, I cannot see the chat for some reason. Okay. And, um, oh, sorry. So how many of you are business owners? Please put that in the chat. If you are a business owner, put that in the chat for me. This thing is so sensitive. And how many of you are headed back in the office over the next few weeks or months? Let me see that. Let me see if I can find what your answers are. I cannot see the chat. Okay, there we go. That's the chat. Okay, now I can see the chat. Thank you guys for your patience. Um, let me see. Business owner tour. Make it happen. Okay, great. Business. A lot of business owners are here. Great. And how many of you are looking to, no matter where you are, you're a business owner, you're ready to get back to full time business, or you are a professional and you're hesitant to go back to work, but some of you might be really excited to go back to work, um, all of those things. I can probably guess that either way, no matter where you are, you wanna feel great day in and day out. Would you agree? You wanna feel good. You wanna feel safe. You wanna feel um, certain about how your day is going to go. And you want, if you're going in an office, you wanna be able to feel balanced when you do that and know that this is this is going to be good and things are going back. So great. Absolutely. I love that. That that absolutely. OK, so that's going to break up, bring us to personal style and brand definition. So before we start, we want to set the groundwork of what are we talking about when we say personal style? So personal style is a distinctive appearance. Well, style is a st distinctive appearance. It's the manner and the way and the technique and the method or the methodology and an approach that you particularly do something. So for example, we know this, these great faces here that there was only one President Obama and the way he distinctively, his techniques and his manners. There's only one Denzel Washington and there's only one Steve Jobs. And this is the way that we know who they are no matter if they show up you know, in, in um, a suit and tie or if they show up in jeans. They have a distinctive style 
to them that is uncomparable to anyone else's. And in the design and fashion world, style is usually shorthand for personal style. And it's the way that an individual expresses themselves through aesthetic choices such as clothing, accessories, and hairstyles. And it's the way that we put together an outfit, okay? So one thing that is undeniable is style is time. No matter if you're a man or a woman, young or old, you know, it's timeless. But before we go on, I want to introduce myself. My name is Gigi McMillan. I am a certified image consultant, and I am super excited about this time as can be with spring is called a rebirth. And as a rebirth, we want to be able to see changes. We want to be able to grow. We want to be able to measure from one season to the next. And over my many seasons of being an image consultant, I've had the pleasure of being an author for a bestseller. I have um, worked with Five Fariel. She is a master in imagery. She is one of 23 that are in the entire world. And she talks about how important um, color and cuts and fits, but more importantly, who you are and how you do it. I'm excited that I have been voted Woman uh, of Excellent by Path to Purchase Institute in 2018. And I am a, a, a member of AICI, which is the Association of Image Consultants International, and they are the global authority on personal presence and image consulting. As we go on, I wanna talk and continue to establish some ground rules to understand where we're going into this presentation. We're gonna separate business branding, here's an overview of that, and personal branding. Our business branding, most companies will look and say, what, are we, what direction are we gonna go? What does the business brand look like? What is, who's our avatar? What do we wanna say and how we wanna say it? So they come up with a strategy. And that strategy maps out how the company is different, trustworthy, and memorable. Then if they go to identity, visuals, messaging, and experience. What kind of experience they want to give? What do they want to say? This includes colors, logos, and fonts. And one thing that you may notice or you may not have noticed, you'll notice my particular fonts and my logos here. Those are my personal Camisol brand logos and fonts. They speak to the brand. And then as a business, we have to figure out a way to market it. And that always comes with understanding brand, uh, bringing awareness to the products and by conducting brand values and with the voices and the right audience. So that's what we're talking about here when we're talking about business branding. And then we're gonna say, I'm gonna ask you this one, looking at this side very quickly, tell me which one you like first. Which one do you like first? Put it in the chat, Starbucks, who else? What else do you like here? What is the number one brand you like on this slide? Mercedes, yes, yes, yes. Anyone else, anyone else? Forbes, I like it, Forbes, okay. You know what? No matter what brand that you like on this slide, you recognize all of them because they have Vogue, yes, I love Vogue. Um, because they have a message, you recognize them, they are consistent, they are certain in their brand, and they're certain in who they um, attract, right? Great. So let's jump here really quickly. So remember that slide. I want you guys to remember that slide for me. And under the circumstances, we know that in 2020 was a wrap for so much, okay? Um, this is a survey that was taken by um, Gartner in 2019, and it was by HR leaders. And they, were, they said 60% of HR leaders um, say building leadership bench is a priority. Okay, that is a priority. 43% of HR leaders say succession management uh, processes didn't yield the right leaders at the right time. And 45% said of HR leaders say that their organization struggles to develop effective leaders. Now, if you agree with that, let me know you agree with it. Really quickly, let me know you agree with it. Yes, you agree or you're not sure. Or no, you don't agree with it. Do 
Not sure? No one's sure? Unsure. Uh, that, that, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. So we're setting this up to get you to be sure. Okay. Some say it, but they don't model it. Oh, that, that's very true. Very true. So in corporate night in 2019, this is what our corporate workplace resembled. This is what we were doing. We were gathered around the conference room table and we were making decisions and making plans and building a brand or an organization company message. This is what we look like in 2020. 2020 shook us all up, right? We don't even wanna stay here too long. Now, with all that in mind, let's continue to move on. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. Who has heard this before? If you've heard this saying, put it in the chat. Yes, I have. Great. I think everyone has heard this before. So with this in mind, we want to take all of what we just talked about and look at it in one, one image right here. Brand identity is the way you want folks to perceive you. And brand image is the way that they actually perceive you. Now, how do you bring that together? Whether you're a business owner, whether you're a team captain, whether you are a CEO, whether you are an administrative professional, it doesn't, whether you're an author, speaker, no matter what. How do you bring both of these entities together so you can live and work and enjoy life day to day. Who knows how, who knows how to do that? What, what, give me some suggestions. Do you agree that both of these things, especially nowadays, especially today, because we have all experienced 2020. So we're more self-aware. We're more certain of what we want. We're more determined to be happy, healthy, balanced, okay? Do you agree? Who wants more of all of that? Yes, I would agree with that too. I want more of it. So we have to find with all of what we learned in 2020 and all of what we, we knew before 2020, right? How to bring who we are and how we do it together, okay? Passion content speaks to personal and professional things that inspire you. I love that, Raymond. That is amazing. I really love that. You're, you're spot on. Okay. So let's look at now personal branding. Now, remember I told you to think about the professional branding we were talking about. If you remember that slide said the strategy is first, the identity is second, and the marketing is third. Well, on personal branding, I choose to switch that up a little bit, right? And the reason why is because we have to know who we are. We, you know, it's a lot of us out here that went to college for one thing and, and, and is doing another. Or there are a lot of people out here, let's say that wanted to become doctors and now they're poets, right? <laughs> and that was before 2020. And you know, who knows someone that's made a drastic change in um, profession that way? You know, I know a couple of people that are doing it, especially a lawyer at one comes to mind who's a lawyer who is now an image consultant um, and she's not being a lawyer anymore. She's doing something that she loves. So that is, people are changing. They're saying, you know what? I need to know who I am so I know what my profession is, what I want to do, what my brand messaging is, how I will not want to have to rebrand during times because it's draining. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the best word for it is draining. So when we embrace our personal brand through the way of identity, and that's the way we convey our characteristics, experiences, values, and traits. And then we put that into a strategy with our business and our personal. And that's how we map out how you're different, trustworthy, memorable, and likable by your ideal client, personally and professionally. 
and then your marketing. Okay, so with personal branding, it has nothing to do with just external things. Personal branding really begins on the inside, and I love this because it's the way you posture, your gestures, your clothing, your facial expression. And 55% of that is visual, 38 is uh, vocal, and seven is verbal. Because when you walk in the room and a first impression, you never get a second chance to make a first impression, no one knows that you are smart. No one knows that you are a great mom. No one knows that you have made a significant transformation in your personal development. They just know what they see. So that first impression is number one. And then, as I said, I like to talk fast. I am excited. When I get excited, I talk faster. And when I want to get a lot more pointed, I might slow down. But 38% of that is what I'm saying, how I'm saying it, and my, and my, and my nonverbal communication. So we're going to tap into that and show you some more information on how to nail those things. Now, personally and professionally, okay, let's put it together. How can you nail each and every first impression by telling your story without saying a word through your identity planning, your strategy, and how you will attract and disseminate the brand plan, marketing. Well, number one, it's editorial planning. And I think a lot of the business owners here will know that it's editorial planning, but it's also something that's called the 7-Eleven plan. Now, if you've heard of the 7-Eleven rule, put it in the chat. If you haven't, say no. If you have, say yes. I'll wait for you. No, 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 no. Okay, no, no, no. Can I get a yes? Can I get a yes? Can I get a yes, yes, yes? No, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. I'm not gonna make you wait any longer. I'm gonna tell you what the 7-Eleven plan is. The 7-Eleven plan is when you have a first impression or you're meeting people, you're going to a new place for a new time. You have seven seconds to capture your identity. And in seven, in those seven seconds, you there are 11 decisions that are being made about you in seven seconds. Does anybody want to take a stab at what that is? No, I'm not gonna do that. Let me just tell you. Okay. It is your education level, your economic level your perceived credibility, believability, competency, honesty, trustworthiness, level of sophistication, sex role identification, level of success, political background, religious background, ethical background, social, professional, and sexual desirability. That has nothing to do with your logo, your, brand, your, your, your font. <laughs> it has nothing to do with your, with your um, uh, 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 speech that you're gonna give today. It has to do with how you show up. Would you agree with that? Yes, Donna, that's what I said. <laughs> wow. I haven't talked to you about an outfit yet. I haven't talked to you about the way to shake a hand yet. <laughs> this is all who you are. It's the 7-Eleven rule. And if you can master this, that's the first part of personal brand. You, if you agree, say yes. I can see, yes, I can see it. Good job, good job. I agree, but I never thought about it. Great, great, great. All right, let's move on because we got so much to cover. Now, in those things that we just talked about, they talk about your credibility, your likability, your personal attractiveness, and your confidence. It depends on where you meet me I'm the same person all the time, but because I may be dressed in a suit and I'm not dressed in my boho modern chic style that I love, 
all the time, like especially all 2020 because I didn't could dress in a suit too much. But you know, those are the things where where you meet me is how I introduce myself. But you will always meet that same person, <laughs> no matter she's wearing a suit or she's wearing jeans. And that's how you go in every room and you are who you are. And that is attracting the people that should be in your sphere, in your circle of influence, in your likability, your attractiveness, your believability circle, all of those things, right? Um, I want to tell you guys a story, but I have so much to cover. And I, if, if we can, I'll do it at the end. Mr. Charles will know this because he was there when I taught the first class and um, I wore a sequin skirt to the speech. <laughs> you remember that, Mr. Charles? And um, there, oh, I got to just tell you guys now. And one person, we, we received the information and one person said, I loved everything she said. You know, it was so true, it was this, it was that. And then they said, but I was distracted by that sequin skirt. I'm like, bingo, yes. You know why? You're not my client. It's that simple. By the way, Gigi, we have the pictures to prove it too. We have the pictures to prove it. <laughs> and that's great because everyone else understood. If I cannot go into a place and be myself however I feel that day, then I'm not supposed to be there. That's an office, that's a, a, a social circle, that's anywhere because you have to be you in order to be the greatest you, the best you, right? All right, let me, I didn't dive hurt again. See, and you gotta hold me accountable. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go into the science of this all. You know, I can tell you all of this, I can give you real life examples and I will give you some more and some case study information. But I want you to know a little bit more about the science of what personal branding and personal style is. And it's called enclosed cognition. Now, if you've heard of that, put yes in the chat. And if you haven't, put no. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. That's all right, I got your back, I got your back. So if I'm asking the questions, I got the answers for you. Enclosed cognition, let me ask you this. If you went to the grocery store and all the chicken noodle soup was gone, but these two on the shelf, which one are you going to select? The one on the left or the one on the right? Tell me, left, left. Oh my goodness, look at you judgmental people. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, you're gonna choose the one on the left. Why? The one on the right, the expiration date's the same. It just kind of fell off the truck and got it, you know. No discount, no discount. Everything on the inside is good. No, 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 Everything on the inside is good. A better presentation. Thank you, Donna. It's a better presentation, simply. So that chicken noodle soup walked in and got all the glory and the other one was like, but I'm just as great too. <laughs> And you are great, but you have to represent yourself as great. Let's keep going. Enclosed cognition is a term coined by Alex, I mean, Adam and Glenty. It was an experience, experiment, excuse me, from 2012 that it related to the effects of how clothing affects the mental process, the way people think, feel, and function. And it affects in areas like attention, confidence or abstract thinking. These, um, what do you call, studies have been done for many, 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 many years. And um, because people have said, oh, don't be so superficial, just put on clothes and go do your job. <laughs> you know, we know it's not superficial. A lot of people know it's not superficial. And the people that you like, you call celebrities and, and um, what is it called? Uh, politicians and all that. They know you like it. They know it's not superficial, don't they? Who, who agrees? They know it's not superficial. That's why y'all know it. Many of them anyway, whether for good or for bad. And we're going to get to that. Hold on. All right. So I'm going to take this couple of minutes and I want you guys to listen to what enclosed cognition is. Um, this is the science of it all. And then we're going to look at a social experiment 
that's going to follow up this particular slide. Okay, so the slide deck will be slide. Okay, all right. So does anyone have any questions before we go here, or do you guys want me to just hit play? No questions. I want to stop if you have any questions. No questions. No questions. Great. All good. Thank you, Cynthia. All right, here we go. Clothing is more than just decoration for the body or protection from the elements. Clothes have powers over your mind. Scientists have demonstrated this in experiments in which they divided people into two groups. Group A wore their normal street clothes, while Group B wore their normal clothes and lab coats. When those people went on to perform tests of mental agility, the group wearing lab coats made about half as many mistakes as the group not wearing lab coats. Stranger still, in a similar experiment in which both groups wore lab coats, but one was told they were wearing painter's socks and the other told they were wearing doctor's coats, the doctor's clothes group performed much better in brain games than did the painter's clothes group. Scientists call this weird phenomenon in clothes cognition, and they say it depends on both the symbolic meaning of the clothing and the psychological experience of wearing the clothes, constantly reminding you of what those clothes represent. The symbolic power of a white coat changes depending on what you call it, and then wearing it prepares you to be more attentive or more careful or more artistic. That feeling can then translate into actual changes in your behavior and performance, depending on the situation. So, remember, the clothes you wear don't just change the way other people see you. They change the way you see yourself. And wearing certain kinds of clothes can affect the way you behave and even change the way you think. That means wearing a pair of glasses not only makes you look smart, it also makes you feel and act like you are now less dumb. Oh, did you guys like that? That's pretty, pretty interesting, right? I would agree. I would agree. Let me just tell you at this part, how many of you um, have seen pictures of Dr. Martin Luther King wearing glasses, something that looked like mine? How many of you have seen him wearing glasses or pictures of him wearing glasses? Dr. Martin Luther King. If you have, say yes, I yes, in pictures. Well, if you haven't, or if you have, you can look it up on the internet. Dr. King wore glasses in pictures and in, in places that he went, but he did not have prescriptions in those glasses. He wore them because he knew that it made him look more intelligent to the people that he was engaging with. So take that with you, but he had very good eyesight. The doctor had very good eyesight. Okay, let's move on. Now we're gonna go to the social experiment of this. Okay. The, this is when judgments go wrong, right? They're traumatizing. Even though that's a child actor, I'm sure she was traumatized to a certain degree because she hasn't had, you can't, you can't prepare a child for that. And you can't prepare an adult for that. Um, so let's move on and understand how important scientifically and socially, personally and professionally, how the way we present ourselves at all times speaks volumes of 
who we are and how we do it. Okay, so let's move to the internal. We just finished the scientific. Let's move to the internal. And when we're working on rebuilding, rebranding, regrowing, or just deciding that we want a change. Just, I, rem I live here in, well, we all live here in Washington, D.C., metropolitan area, and we've seen this where the scaffolding is done. It was happening right before our eyes. I think it took about a year from the time it went up and it was protected and all of those things. And then when the scaffolding was removed a year later, um, we all saw the beautiful transformation that it made and, and, and to keep it healthy. So if we take this much time to pay attention to our buildings and our infrastructures and um, in various different ways, our bodies are the best masterpiece of them all. And anything that's coming very close to it is going to make us feel good or it's going to keep us flat. And one thing that we wanna do is be able to feel good every single day. Once we can do that, we can make the right business choices. We can make the right choices for our future as far as our professions, our life, love goals, or what have you, because we have a clear understanding of what that looks like. So when we remove the scaffolding and we've done the work and we know who we are and know how to make mornings great, my day-to-day -day great, then the scaffolding comes all and off and we walk into our greatness. So, but that all starts at the core. And as you know, as you can see these apples, I mean, I love going to, to buy apples in the grocery store and everything, but when we eat those red juicy apples and bring them home, we cut them up, we put them in peanut butter and we chew on them, what do we do? We throw the core away, but the core is where the seed is and it's the most important part of the apple, yet it's thrown away. We don't want the outer just to look good. We wanna be able to replant our seed and replant our seed and replant our seed because we know that's where our strength comes from. So when we build from the core, there's nothing no one can do about it, right? I agree with that. <laughs> it starts with understanding your own personality and your personality theory, your style, your personal style and visual harmony. What are your unique um, differentiators and the style of psychology that is meant for you? How do you understand and determine what does that look like? Well, this is what it is. It's about decoding who you are. No one's ever said, take time and be yourself and, 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 and learn about you so you know how to walk into the world. You know what kind of friends you want. You know what kind of mate that you want. Decoding you is understanding what your personality identifiers are, is your characteristics, your experiences, your values, and your traits. And then you peel back that next layer is your lifestyle and your career. Where are you and where do you want to be? Those are, those are important questions when you are building for the future. And continuing, if we go here, we're talking about style psychology and understanding your own personal unique style psychology. And believe me, if you are a twin, you still have an individual style psychology. It's understanding your dominant and alter ego styles. That's your personality. And the levels and degrees of within that temperature of where you want, where you go, where do you balance? What are your visual favorites? What are the colors and the style archetype that makes up who you are? Now, you can look at that in different ways. This is a, um, a great example of this is understanding who you are, colors, harmony. These are the things that a, a personal stylist, a brand manager will help you figure out. What is personally important to you and how we bring that into your brand presence. So you can always be you 100% of the time. Now, let's talk about some case studies of old clients that I have and um, some new clients. Because um, a couple of these people, they come back to me periodically because they learn the lesson, right? And when, I, when you learn the lesson, that's the best thing for me because I want you to be able to do this on your known, own and know your own personal power through color cut fit, fonts, logos, whatever, you, whatever else you have if you're a business owner. So let's look at Michelle. We're not gonna go over all of this information, but these are the reflections of when Michelle came to me in 2017, she was disconnected. And she, the results that she was hoping to achieve, she wanted to feel sharp. 
She wanted to feel better about herself and she wanted to increase her income and play at a higher level. Pe personal style, people were looking for this but didn't know what that really meant even further back in 2017, but it, this is the case study from 2017. In 2018, um, Tina's biggest fears and frustration was she's feeling that she was being left behind in the curve when it comes to modern style and branding. And she feels like her brand is old fashioned and dated. Now I can tell you this particular client, when, I, when we finished with her, she was walking through Dallas, Dallas Airport and um, someone that was in advertising or does the ads in that, uh, in the airport asked for her, asked her, would she be interested in doing a banner in the airport because they liked her look? Well, she was dressed in red, going to a business meeting where she didn't have a chance. And then she had a jacket. She had a full jacket, red jacket and a red dress that she had on. And that's what attracted that per particular um, person. And she ended up doing a banner in Dallas Airport in 2018. And in 2019, um, Debbie, she was she said she felt like she was losing opportunities um, of the impression that she gave. She's a business owner, um, and she wanted uh, she wanted the way I look to represent the level that she's supposed to be playing at. That was another one that said the same thing at different times. And this this is the reason why we can figure this out because number one, we keep this information, but number two. It's understanding that there's a language, there's an increase her level and play at a higher level. And she wants to represent at the level that she's supposed to be. They knew it was something. And finding it personally is where you really, really shine. So I ask you today, ladies and gentlemen, there are over 7 billion people in the world. And especially here in Washington, D.C., we're all so very smart. What sets you apart from those 7 billion people? And you don't have to answer that. I want you to answer it for yourself. What sets you apart from those 7 billion people? And it's your self-expression, it's who you are, how you do it. That's it. And owning it in the process with confidence. So the external. Now we get to the external and the, and the visual branding of it all, okay? The, um, so visual brand presence is thinking about these things. People spend, Statistics have shown recently in recent studies that people are spending 17 minutes a day in their closets looking for something to wear. Do you have a closet full of uninspiring clothes? Clothes. Have you had a lifestyle change and ready for something new? Did you secure a new? Did you secure or looking to secure a new job position and want to make a great impression day after day? Do you want to curate a trademark style that is bold? or understated to fit your personality? Do you feel your current wardrobe items do not speak to who you are today? If you said yes to any of these things, then you know what, you're ready, you're leveling. And you know, like those other case studies have shown, there's something, but I'm just not sure how to nail that. And it's being assured and certain every single day. You know that you have a Zoom meeting today, this is what I'm going to wear. You know that you have to go into work Monday through Thursday and have all of those things line up where you are wearing 100% of your wardrobe. You feel good every day because when you waste 17 minutes a day and you're rushing out the door or you're trying 15 items on to put the first one back on because you're frustrated and you run out the door, those things affect the way that we, um, our, our success factor, our, our um, ability to be, uh, focus and be assured about everything that we're doing and where we're going day after day. When we remove these obstacles and we know, know who we are and how we want to represent ourselves, it makes life so much easier. So let me tell you the most recent way that we understand this or we saw this was at the inaugural in January. They were talking about, we're so glad to have fashion back. We saw our fir first ladies, former first ladies and vice presidents represent that purple lovely in their own particular way. Jennifer Lopez did not come to play, nor did Vice President's uh, uh, daughter. She gave us avant-garde like crazy. And this was one of the biggest topics about Inauguration Day, if you remember, is what they were wearing and what they represented. 
because what we wear, First Impressions has sold her books out. She was the youngest inaugural poet. And every time she, what she wore was intentional from the birds in the cage ring that was Maya Angelou's from that yellow coat that she said that she wanted to wear when Oprah was gonna offer her something more and what the colors represented. And I think she handled it from there. I don't, I, I'm pretty sure she did. And then we had Bernie. <laughs> How many of you all loved Bernie? And, and you all put the meme up of Bernie sitting in your background. How many of you did it? How many of you laughed at Bernie? Tell me you laughed at him. I know you did. I know you did. I know you did. <laughs> but let me tell you what Bernie did. Bernie is the man. Bernie understands his power. He has a brand of his own. Edge comb, uh, Dow jacket. They doubled in sales to an it, that was compared two and a half weeks combined when he wore this jacket. The poor mitten lady, she couldn't knit enough mittens because Bernie sent all the people to her for the mittens. And he sold the means on the shirt for $45 to, to give the proceeds to uh, Meals on Wheels. Now you tell me how style works. I give Bernie a hand. Go ahead, Bernie. <laughs> now, Men, I know there are men here. And let me ask you, which suit do you like before or after? No, no, don't answer that. What suit do you own before or after? Answer that one. You own the before suit or do you own the after suit? After, good for you. After, that's what I'm talking about. Both, both. Okay, take before and go take it to the people you take it to afterwards, Kevin. That's good. Okay, so... This is a personality identifier. You can tell from this gentleman's face, he feels a lot more confident in his body language in one of the suits more than the other. Because when a, a suit is tailored, would you have a great fit? Oh my goodness, it's just, wow. After with a bow tie, <laughs> okay. Oh, I love it. Okay, now let's talk about ties. That was a good, good lead in William. Thank you so much. Let's talk about ties. So how many of the men here and women here know that tie color means something? Red means power, dominance, and strength. So if you can go back, I'm just going to give you all an assignment if you want to do it. Go back and look how many past presidents wore blue ties. And the most recent past president, how many times did he wear a red tie? Okay. How many times? And a purple tie. And check President, our President Obama, how many times he wore a purple tie. And his, the purple tie says, I'm comfortable in my own skin and someone, uh, and someone who with you want to build a relationship. So that's right. Business owners here, the men business owner here, put your purple tie on as we open up, okay? All right. All right. So also, when we do this and we are learning our body types and our silhouettes and, and all of those things, and we're going from uncertain to certain, there are things that we need to know. We need to know what our body shape is. What does that look like? If this, these are for women, this is women in particular, of course. And then what does that mean for the shapes and the cuts that we need? And what does that mean for the fit in the best pant cuts that we need? So these are the things that I show you in your own book of view, what I call the book of view, which is your personal style psychology, is setting all of this up. So you always have something to say when you don't need GG anymore. You can go to the store. It's never a problem with you going to the store because you will know what you're supposed to wear. What's your best cut? How to add those, those important items to your wardrobe um, season to season. How to save money and to build certainty and remove the uncertainty in your wardrobe. I like to tell my clients, the square footage, no matter what the square footage is in your closet, um, it's one of the most important places in your home because it speaks to who you are. So nothing that should be in there that you do not love. If you have things, tags still hanging on your clothes, things that are old, things that are in the back of the closet, when you go in there, it's creating confusion every single day for those 17 minutes and it's uncertain, it makes you frustrated. 
You are tired. You just want to look good and feel good every day. Well, in order to do that, you have to plan to put the scaffolding up and then you do the work and you can take the scaffolding down and you'll be able to walk in that closet, close your eyes, pull your jackets, your tops, your pants with your eyes closed and everything works in visual harmony for not only where you're going, but your complementary of your inherent colors to your contrasting colors, your personality type. And you know what? Anywhere that's in that closet that you can wear, you can wear it day or night. I call that the flow system for leisure or work. That's your flow. If your closet should flow and it doesn't matter where you're going, you shouldn't have work clothes and then play clothes. All of your clothes are supposed to be worn because they represent you and it's 100% self-expression. So food for thought and takeaways. Your personal brand is your identity. It's your self-expression. It's your sense of self and it's spoken and it's unspoken. Let's own that 7-Eleven rule. Highlight all of your personal brand identity factors and for you to be able to grow your business, to change your career, to um, do, to feel good and to be more confident in who you are day to day. And a few more takeaways is the way you dress affects the way you think and what you believe about yourself. In experiments, people who wore clothes that were more appropriate to their tasks performed better in those tasks. The way you dress has a real impact on your performance. And if you're down or not feeling well, dress your best. It will probably help you cope and you won't feel as bad. The book of you begins with you deciding to move from uncertainty to certainty. And it's better to be ready for every opportunity instead of planning to be ready. You contact me, we can go through a 20 minute discovery diagnostic call and um, my, my calendar will be in that information. And remember the beauty of you is how you wear who you are day to day. Thank you guys so much for listening and I really appreciate your time. And that's it, Mr. Charles. Gigi, excellent presentation as always. Um, I can tell by the chat area that, you, you know, you hit it out of the park. Oh, thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. We still have a few minutes, so if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat area. If you have questions, I love questions. Oh, let me see. You're welcome, Sharon. Uh, Sandra, I really appreciate that. All right. Thank you so much, Kevin. I appreciate that. So if you guys don't have questions, you know what? And let me let me just say this to take, take the ease off. Personal style is just that. It's personal. And it's confidential. And it's not something that people want everybody to know that they're doing because it's not something that, you know, people have talked about for many, many years or it's been an option usually it's celebrities or politicians um nancy pelosi was voted as one of the most well she's always voted the best dress on capitol hill and um if you all notice she she wears armani every single suit that she wears is an armani suit and that's her style that's her certainty she you will never catch her being uncertain and if y'all don't know, and I think I'm pretty sure still today, I haven't looked at TV lately, but um, she transformed with the mask like nobody's business. <laughs> she had a mask for everything and they, they matched her outfits accordingly, right? Um, so just understanding that tapping into who you are, it starts, your personal brand does not start outside of you. It starts inside of you. And if you want to talk about that, we can go through a diagnostic plan, uh, call, and then we can set up a strategy session for you, and then we build the book of you and um, go from there. 
Yes, we I actually had, well did you, we actually had a question just pop up. It says, okay. if you're talking to youth, is it necessary to dress like them? Um, I would, I would say dress like you. Now let's talk about the day of, um, uh, when I trained at the chamber of commerce, when I wake up, I wake up and I say, how do I feel today? My closet is certain, right? So it's a matter of how do I feel today? And that day that I woke up <laughs> uh, to go teach um, at the Chamber of Commerce in 2019, I wanted to wear my uh, tailored uh, skirt with my tailored cigar jacket um, that day. And we have the pictures to prove it. And it was a, it was a sequin skirt. And it was below my knee, but it was definitely tailored. So I said, that was my very first time training too, wasn't it, Charles? I think it was, yeah. It, it was, was the first very, time. My yeah. very first time training. And it was because I felt that way was the reason why I was like, okay, well, they're going to like it or they're not. <laughs> That's it. So I would say you dress how you feel. If you, um, I, I talk about dominant and alter ego styles. Your dominant style is usually what you um what you do every day. So in, in, in what we are accustomed to is we were going to work every day. We were traveling every day. We would wear this. We would, you know, this is our same five outfits that we're going to wear. And then in the weekend that we're, we're, we're dressing something else, but most of the closet is being taken up by the work, something you have to do, not that you want to do. So what I say is, is if you buy items that you can pair together, okay. And you should be able to wear them anywhere business casual or suits, um, even pairing the pieces on a social way. There are ways that you incorporate that into your professional presence that is always going to work wherever you go. If they're asking you to speak, then they know who they're, they're welcoming. Uh, Gigi, it looks like we have another question here. Does your consultation also provide some suggestions on where to shop for hard to fit sizes? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I have, I am connected with over 2000 stores globally. So I can do virtual shopping and I do personal shopping experiences with my clients that uh, have transformation. So you, I'm always looking for you. So if you are a, um, a, a curvy uh, a plus size or big and tall, I have a spreadsheet full of stores globally that help my clients to be able to dress. I'm actually preferring doing my virtual styling more than the in-person right now because the stores, they're just not ready. I had a client just last weekend and it was so hard for me to find anything for her in that store where, you know, we did find a few things, but it wasn't what I would have normally been able to pull for that client. So that next morning before shoot day, um, what I did was I ran into a couple of other my go-to places and I went and bought her some more clothes. I was like, oh, honey, I can't have you just dressing it. And then the weather did not hold up to what it was. So it's a whole thing, right? The thing is, is do what makes you feel good always. But understand, whatever that is, be very intentional. But understand that you don't get to choose how people respond to that. But as long as you're being intentional, then you, you're you good. Great. Um, someone asked about your contact information. Just to let everybody know, Gigi provided me the slide deck in advance of this presentation. So I will be getting that out by this evening. So you, you will have her contact info. Um, one other question, Gigi, is you mentioned editorial planning. Could you elaborate more on that? Yes. Um, it's for business, mostly for business owners, when I say editorial planning, editorial planning for your business is bringing that personal style and that business brand together. And when you do that, you want to rebrand or you want to relaunch. How do you create that editorial plan for your customers? And I call it an edit editorial plan because it's the way that you're able to see your next from a bird's eye view, right? And that's what, that's how you're going to be engaging in, what information you're going to share, what you're going to teach, where you're going to teach, where you're going to speak. 
and you have a bird's eye view of that planning. And we do that. I do that for my clients or we do that for my our clients um, and help them develop that editorial plan for a launch for business. Uh, we have international global clients that we work with and have worked with um, to develop that for business owners. Because when you're working by yourself, you need someone that's kind of been there and done that. And I've learned through trial and error for so many years, but you know, we have um, nailed it and we know what that is in helping business owners plan out far in advance to create that certainty, to create that understanding. So you get to be with your clients and learn what they want. These processes are taking up a lot of your time. So if you're interested in that with your personal and professional planning and development, let me know. We can definitely talk about it and see, see if we would be good for each other. Um, does it look like there's any more questions in the chat area? Yay! So I think at this point, I guess we can we can stop and uh, Gigi, um, uh, well, for everybody on here, Gigi's information will be provided uh, in the slide deck. And uh, if you have any follow on questions, you can reach out to her. Um, we will also have recording this and uh, the recording will be provided to everyone uh, who attended today. Yay, that's cool. I didn't know that part. That's cool. I like yeah. that, Mr. Charles. Yeah, the recording, actually the recording will be posted on our website. So not only the attendees, but everybody will be able to view it. So awesome. Gigi, once again, thank you for a great presentation. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you guys for being so lively. I love it. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so you guys have a great, great weekend. Um, what is this, uh, weekend eve? And, um, and one week away from Memorial Day weekend. That's right, one week away. Yeah. Have a great day. Everybody take care and thank you. Bye, thank you.